Hey there, and welcome to Insomma Insight number 348, in which we will talk circadian rhythm. It's a different one, and this is, you know, by request from Freema. And I think this is this is important because, uh, you know, understanding how sleep is regulated is very important. And you have probably heard me talk a lot of times about the gas and the break, which when it comes to insomnia really is what is the most important. Well, guess what? Today, we're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to just talk about like basic sleep physiology here, but we're not going to look at hyperarousal. We're just going to look at the gas, sleep drive, and process C, the circadian rhythm. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple of questions from Freema. And I overall hope this will give you just overall better understanding of sleep and help demystify this process. And, you know, that always, I think, really, really is helpful. So let's jump in here. I'm trying a new thing uh, today, uh, which is called a Jamboard. It's uh, a Google product where we're going to be able to sketch things. So uh, I, I hope I hope this will, uh, you know, work out really well. So, OK, let's start this. So first of all, uh, I would like you to imagine that, you know, here's clock time, okay? This is 6 a.m. And let's say we have another 6 a.m. here. So here we have like the full 24 hour cycle, okay? And then in the middle, of course, we will have 6 p.m. Okay, that is our time indications. And so on this axis, we have time. And on this axis, we're gonna add all, you know, all the factors we are, we are interested in. And there are three of them. We are going to start with process H. We're going to talk about the homeostatic process, which is basically sleep drive. Very, very straightforward. Let's say uh, this you know, fictional person that we're talking about here wakes up at 6 AM. Well, they slept, so they actually have very little sleep drive. Their body has just slept, so they are in no need uh, for sleep at all at that point. So their sleep drive is close to zero, okay? Well, then this person continues to be awake, of course, throughout the day, and guess what happens? Their sleep drive just increases and increases and increases throughout the day because they continue to be awake, so their sleep drive increases, right? And now it's probably 9 p.m. here, and now it's 10, let's say it's 11 or something like that. Well, then their sleep drive, uh, you know, they, they sleep here, and that sleep drive quickly, uh, quickly evaporates, okay? So this is basically process H here. This is the sleep drive, the gas process, okay? Now, starting here, uh, if we imagine that sleep was only driven by process C or you know, wakefulness and sleep, uh, you know, how we felt during the day, I should say, was only driven by this, then our experience during the day would be something like this. We would wake up feeling fantastic. You know, we just slept, we feel great. And then throughout the day, we would just feel more and more and more sleepy. And, you know, towards like, it was at 9, 10, 11 p.m. here, we would just feel super sleepy, you know, and then eventually fall asleep and sleep. But, but guess what? That is not the typical experience. Actually, most of us function quite well from, you know, 7 p.m. and onwards. So how is that possible? That's clearly not the case if process H was the only thing that was, uh, you know, um, that was kind of running the show here. So, of course, there has to be something else. And that is process C. Okay, so process C is our circadian process, okay? So when, when you know, this fictional person again wakes up at 6 a.m., um, they uh, have very little circadian alerting factors. And as you'll see, the circadian rhythm is really there to counteract the homeostatic process. So, you know, this person has, you know, is not sleepy and therefore doesn't really need the body to produce much alerting substance because again, there's no sleep drive, they're not sleepy. But as the day goes along to counteract increasing sleepiness, guess what? The body uses these alerting signals, which are probably things like, you know, cortisol or adrenaline or whatever it is uh, in low doses that just helps keep us awake. So they keep increasing here, but guess what? Around like midday, let's say this is noon, there is typically a little dip there's a little circadian dip here. Uh, don't know exactly why, but that's you know well well studied and part of the model here. But then after that, you know things pick up again, and 
alerting signal is just produced more and more and more. And this is the reason that we continue to function really well, even in the afternoon, even in the evening. But then somewhere here, let's say around, you know, just before 11 or something like that, uh, there is, okay, I'm just gonna continue this. Uh, even I made a little booby here, but let's say here, right, right here, it starts to get withdrawn, okay? So suddenly, pretty suddenly, the body starts withdrawing these alerting signals that it has been producing. And that is why for most people, sleepiness comes pretty quickly. You're doing something that, whoa, I suddenly felt sleepy. That's because the, the body pretty suddenly starts withdrawing that, um, that alerting signal. And then as it, and, it, and then quickly, this quickly alerting signal quickly dissipates to like almost nothing here uh, around, what is this? Like, you know, 3.30, 4 a.m. or something like that. And then it kind of completely goes away. And so when this alerting signal from the circadian drive is, is you know, it's just withdrawn and you have this sleep drive that's been built throughout the day, well then sleep happens and the whole thing kind of resets in the morning at 6 a.m. So this, the net effect of this, if we will, the net effect on alertness becomes something like this. Let's say at 6 a.m. we wake up, we kind of like a little bit groggy, but we quickly feel pretty alert. And then we maintain a fairly constant level of alertness throughout the day. We feel a little bit sleepy uh, around noontime, but then we feel pretty alert, function pretty well throughout the day until until this uh, this withdrawal happens, we quickly start feeling sleepy and then we sleep. I don't know how, how to illustrate sleep in this uh, scenario. I'll just do something like, I'll just do something like this and then sleep happens from here to here. Let's, let's say that. So this is kind of like, here, here we have it. This is pretty much uh, the circadian rhythm, uh, you know, uh, illustrated. And now I want to point out some, some interesting phenomena that we can learn from this. Uh, in, in, in fact, before we go there, I wrote something else that I thought was important. Uh, super, super important here. Circadian rhythm often is kind of mystified. A lot of people ask like something is wrong with circadian rhythm. What's wrong? What can something be wrong with your circadian rhythm and things of that nature? Well, uh, you can have like a delayed uh, circadian rhythm kind of where you're a night owl. You can be an early bird, especially teenagers tend to be like real night owls. But that's not, uh, I don't consider that like any, any disorder. It's just like a tendency towards one or the other. And what's important to know, I think about circadian rhythms is that they're real, we have them, but they're entrainable. You know, you can move from Scotland to New Zealand and adapt to that, you know, they are not set in stone in, in, by any mean. And the what entrains them the most, in my thinking, I, I personally don't believe it is really light. I think it is like when we wake up more than anything else, because, you know, people function in, you know, in, uh, you know, Iceland and things of that nature during the winter and summer for that matter. So I think it is more like when our clock goes off and when we wake up, that becomes this entrainment here uh, in, for this person at 6 a.m. And so uh, I just want to point out that circadian rhythms are entrainable. They can be changed by, you know, habit setting, really. Okay, that was my first point. Number two point, the interesting phenomenon is this one. Let's say um, uh, some, uh, a random person typically sleeps here from like 11 to about six, something like that. But let's say this person uh, had to get up one hour before they normally do. They had to get up 5 a.m. So this person sleeps instead of like around seven hours, which we know most people don't, right? Most people sleep six hours. But just for this, um, for the sake of discussion here, let's say this person typically sleeps, you know, from about 11 to about six, but now they had to get up one hour earlier. So now they slept from about 11 to five. Well, guess what? You know, they're thinking, whoa, I feel super sleepy when I get up at five. It was like dark outside and I just struggled for a good hour there. Why is that? Because if they stay up an hour later and sleep from like 12 to 6, they usually don't have that much trouble. But when they had to get up an hour earlier, they felt super sleepy. Well, guess what? We have the answer he right here. And the answer is that before, before like after 6 a.m., when that alerting signal kicks in again, there is like zero alerting signal. The, the body like produces none of that those stimulating hormones. So oftentimes if we are forced to get up like, 
uh, throughout, like in, in that time frame, like, you know, two, three, four, five a.m., we often feel like really sleepy because there's no alerting signals at all. That's one thing that this model uh, explains why sleeping, uh, even if you sleep close to how much you normally do, but wake up early, you can still feel really, really tired. That's one thing I wanted to point out that this model really explains well. And uh, the other one is that dip in circadian rhythm that uh, creates uh, this kind of sleepiness that often happens at like 1, 2 p.m. That's a lot of cultures have a siesta. Nobody knows really why, but it's well described. So that's another phenomenon that uh, I think is important. And here's another interesting one. Um, if, if anyone has pulled an all-nighter, you know, you've been up all night because you were studying or you did something, you probably will notice this that you started to feel quite sleepy around maybe two or three, but you had a good time, you know, didn't really bother you too much. And then maybe towards like five, 6 a.m. you felt like, oh my gosh, I have a hard time staying awake. But, the, but then around like six, 7 a.m. when you normally get up, you're like, whoa, that, I got that second wind. I, I feel pretty okay again. And then you can go on to have a pretty good day. Why is that? Well, it is because of those alerting signals again, even though if we say in this model that sleep did not happen and your uh, your process uh, H here, let's say your, your sleep drive actually continued increasing throughout this night and it starts like at a really high note the following day, well, guess what? You still have these alerting signals that kick in in the morning and, and that's why after having been awake for, for 24 hours, you you still actually start feeling more alert because of those alerting signals. Very interesting um, reason uh, uh, that is now explained here. And with that thing, I think we actually have talked about all the things I wanted to really point out with the circadian rhythm here. And so let's go back to the questions. A uh, couple of questions from, from Freema, who is one of our members in the self-coaching pro master program. Super happy having you there, Freema, by the way. But she's wondering, and she asked me to do this uh, this episode. So she was saying, um, "Is this does the circadian rhythm vary from person to person?" Uh, I think everything varies from person to person. And I think uh, yes, there are people who are night owls who are early birds. I think there are also variations in sleep need. I don't know if sleep need is necessarily to do with circadian rhythm, but I think yes, it does vary from person to person. And again, night preferences as to when you like to sleep. Uh, is one administration of that. That is true. Is it different for people over 60? I, I do believe that um, uh, it is not a coincidence that, uh, you know, people as they get, go into like senior years uh, tend to often take a nap. So I do believe that um, that has to do with a, you know, stronger circadian dip there in the, in the early afternoon and kind of makes makes you more likely to take a nap and so i think there is some some changes there for for, for sure and then um Freema says i get sleepy around nine i usually get up between five and six a.m i think this is like to me uh, you know this is a combination of circadian rhythm and and the other process process like this, this the process h or this, the sleep drive that if you typically get up at five i'm not surprised that you start feeling sleepy at nine you know i think uh um uh, that you know that is fairly early and you get feel sleepy fairly early there in the evening i don't think it's any any surprises there so um i uh, overall th i ho hope this was helpful to you Freema, and anybody else uh, that um had a, a little bit of interest here in the circadian rhythm not necessarily again related to insomnia but i think the more you understand sleep the better the less mystery the better any questions on this one please leave a comment uh, on uh, you know, in, in the comment section, if you have a question that you want uh, to address in open class, and of course, send it to questions at the .com. If you would like to hire myself to help you get to a place where you are immune to insomnia and sleep well for the rest of your life, then please consider heading to the uh, app store and download downloading bedtime, which is great if you're busy person, maybe you don't have that much time on any given day and you like text-based coaching, or if you like learning via video, please consider the self-coaching master program where myself and coach, uh, coach, uh, coach Michael interact all the time via text and we do a weekly uh, live 
dropping classes as well. So consider those, please. With that said, super nice having you here and hope this brought a lot of value to you and I uh, hope you'll be back real soon.